In other tutorials, we have already talked about the essential aspects to get good finishes. What happens? Well, there are some pending aspects that you have reminded us in the comments and we believe that it is very important to clarify them by making another tutorial. First of all, there are aspects of the application in which some of you have told us that we were giving the paint with a roller in a careless way. It's true. We were talking about rollers, we showed the rollers, and we didn't worry about explaining very well how to paint, making sure that the job looks good. But the truth is that we were really talking about tools aimed at professionals, to whom we don't have to teach that. But it is true that these tutorials are seen by both professional and non-professional public, so it is important that we take that into account. Thank you for the suggestion and for that feedback that some professionals have given us. There is also a second very important aspect. It's a question you ask us for fee often. Well, I already know how to paint. Now I want to know what it is the best paint I can choose so that my walls will be perfect. Well, that's also what we're going to talk about in this tutorial. We are going to teach you the best criteria so that the paint you choose is the one that best suits your needs. Before we go into detail about these topics, let's review what is essential to remember to make the walls look good. First of all, we always need to make enough tweaks to correct all the defects that the surface has. Remember that the smooth wall is called that because it is really smooth and because it has no damage. After making these corrections, we need the wall to be perfectly homogeneous, and that the paint has very good anchoring. This is achieved by applying a primer, which is a sealant, a fixing, or however you call it, because there often are so many doubts around terminology regarding these products. This one we're going to dilute it with a ratio of 1 to 4, one part of a primer and four parts of water. The surface flatness must be respected using a roller that does not give texture before applying the paint. I'm going to use a medium 3 8 roller which is the same that I will use later to apply the satin paint. This part is essential because 99.9% .9 of the queries that you ask us like. For example, when you say I don't know how to paint because the roller leaves marks on the surface, I get bubbles. There are unequal areas of paint. All this has to do basically with not having applied this primer well. Now, with the walls ready, we go to the next step, which is painting. And here is where we will talk about the secrets of matte and satin paints, because there are some aspects that are may surprise you. When we go shopping, there is a sort of tradition. When they ask you, what kind of paint do you want, matte or satin? We always say, matte. Do you know why we say matte? Well, I'll explain it now. We begin, as always, by doing the edges of the encounters. We have done it the easy way, putting painter's tape and painting with a brush these encounters. In general, for matte paint we are interested in having a roller that loads a great amount of paint and extends a lot. This is the case of the Rollmatic we are using, it is made of Teflon fibers and it allows me to do this job. Despite loading a lot of paint, I can extend it for a very long time. As you can see, with a paint like this one with high hiding power, we've made a lot of progress. Matte paints, when painting, usually cover more than satin ones. This is because they have a lot of pigment. At the same time, this forces us to distribute the amount of paint very well because, otherwise, there may be marks left from the roller. They are very porous paints, very breathable. If we need a wall to be breathable because there is any presence of moisture, it will always be better to use matte paint. Even if we are applying a paint that covers better the basis because it has less difference in tones, I am always in favor of applying a second layer, even if the first layer looks okay. This way, I'm guaranteed to have the wall more protected and it's going to give me more duration. The difference we have between the matte paint and satin paint is, of course, their shine. And that shine is achieved by the fact that the matte paint has a rather irregular surface. An uneven surface reflects light like satiny. 
In the satin, what we see on the surface is a layer of resin that covers the entire pigment and the load that goes inside. Being such a smooth surface, it reflects all the light. That is why the colors are also more intense. In the case of this one, it does not. That's why we, when we applying this painting, we can afford to do it with a more irregular roller, more loaded, thicker. It's faster to paint with matte paint. When we paint with the satin paint, we will notice that it is a little more difficult to apply. It doesn't cover so well. We're going to give it thinner layers because otherwise we will notice a lot of irregularities. In this case, we will do it with a different roller. It is a 3 8 snap roller that gives us better smoothing. This smoothing is very interesting for this type of ending and, indeed, we will see how the paint extends but the covering is lower. I has less amount of pigment is relative than the other because it has, in return, more resin. To make the comparison, we have chosen another paint with an identical color. The two paintings are Ovaldeen from Monto which is a paint frequently used in the professional world to achieve high quality finishes. You must always use gloves when painting, nitro gloves. Especially now that the tools have already been used and every time we touch something we're going to get pretty dirty. Look, this is the effect of the first layer of the satin. You can see how it the difference in brightness. When we talk about the texture being flat, we always talk from a microscopic perspective. Logically, both have texture. What happens is that, while both of them have texture, one reflects the light and the other does not. This is because the surface, from the microscopic point of view, is enormously smooth on the satin and it is what gives this reflection. At the same time as I told you before, this wall, no matter how much I rub it what it has on top is resin. I will not remove the pigment in any case. Scratches, friction in this one they are practically not visible. While on the mat, there is pigment on the surface. So as soon as I rub it, it is easier that some material is removed and that is why it is less washable. Let's give the second coat to this one to see what the finish is. Because you have already seen that at the end of the drying process there have been areas with marks. This is important that we do not confuse it. Sometimes you say, I have areas with different color. That's logical. When in the first layer it does not cover enough, it needs more color in some areas because I do not apply the painting in a totally homogeneous way. When there is enough paint so that it is no longer transparent. It's going to be all even and I'm not going to have any marks. It is important that we distinguish it, dark colors, two layers and, until they are given. It is absolutely normal that there are zones of transparency. When painting the wall we try to load the paint and spread it as evenly as possible. In this sense, and especially in the second layer in which it is hard to see, it is very important that you retouch well the encounters between the different paint sections made by the roller. In this way, we make sure that the paint sections are perfectly matched so that there are no marks left. When you paint with intense colors, it is important that you always use high quality paints. Because it is very easy, when you wash it or with any friction, to take soft part of that pigment and then scratches are immediately noticeable in that part of the wall. We now apply the second layer in the satin wall. You see that the application is simpler here. Having the first layer already applied, we spread the paint much better and the application is easier. As the surface is mainly composed of resins, the satin paints are very washable and the brighter, the more washable they are. The brighter a paint is, the harder it is to tear out pigments from their surface because they are always protected by the top layer of resin, which is the one that also gives the shine. Don't forget that you also have intermediate solutions that you can look at in the store such as the semi-matte paintings.
Well, what would be the conclusion of what we've seen? We will apply matte paint first because we like matte paint. Of course, we're not going to discuss that. But, if we also like the satin, the matte paint is going to be especially useful when we have flaws to hide on the wall. Any wall damage will be hidden when the light from the surface is removed. In that sense matte paint is more gratifying. If I have bothered to leave the wall fantastic at the time of preparing it and it is wonderful, in my case, I certainly have clear that I'm not going to hide it by painting with matte paint. I'm going to apply a nice color. Besides, I'm going to put a satin on it because I want to see a color that reflects light, that reflects joy because I believe that the wall really has a lot more importance with this type of paint. Of course, as always, there is aesthetic issues. It is often advisable that we we can spend a little more on satin paint because, in fact, the durability it has is much longer. So it also means savings. There are a series of elements that are usually not taken into account. Due to the complexity that satin paint has and that as you've seen, it's a little slower process. Apart from that, of course, I think that the comparative is obvious to everyone. I hope you found this video interesting and, as always, that we got your like, that you subscribe to the channel if you weren't subscribed yet, and, of course, that you share this video with all your friends who like interior design.